It's the 3rd of October 2020 and it's coming up to quarter to 10 at night. It's been a bad week. As I half expected, despite what the initial feedback from Julie was at Waltham Forest corporate complaints, the corporate complaint stage two went against me. They never answered any of the questions. All they said was my single point of contact was not under the behavioural policy. I didn't say where they're getting the where they're getting the power from, what policy it's under, or who actually signed off the policy or the single point of contact procedure. Why do councils just not answer questions directly? If they're doing something wrong, then they're doing something wrong. Why make people go through nine months of misery? I need to get back to square one. I'm on the end of a bottle of Shiraz. Because why not? I felt like getting drunk tonight. I can't trust anyone. I've e I've sent a text to Gina yesterday, or this morning. I can't remember when. This morning, maybe last night, telling her to basically stop this care plan because after three years, it's not going to be worthwhile anyway. I needed a care care plan three years ago. Not now. Not for four hours a week, and not for stuff that isn't what I need it for. No one believes me anyway. I'm living on a knife edge from day to day. And the only thing that keeps me going are my three cats. If it weren't for them, I would have topped myself years ago. Especially with Merlin, because I've known him for about 10 years. Well, maybe about 12 years now, thinking about it, because I've known him since he was about one. And I will literally do anything for that boy. Oh, I don't know. No one wants to talk to me. Mary's the only one that wants to talk to me. When I do get people talking to me online, they only talk to me sporadically. And then only a couple of times and then they blank me. It's like last night, I had a phone call from someone that I went on a date with about a year and a half ago, I think it was. Once. Down near Elephant Castle, I think it was. Or Vauxhall. It was a Nando's anyway. And she suddenly called me out of the blue, but I was online trying to help someone else who's suffering with the same sort of symptoms I've got. I watched the live feed from her um, the day beforehand and was trying to help her out with getting some counselling and that, because she lives on a narrowboat. And when you haven't got, I mean, it's bad enough when you have got a fixed address. When you haven't got a fixed address, it's nonsense, the system. And that is the one thing I want to get changed in the system. That people without a fixed address get psychological counselling via a phone. So they can talk to the same counsellor every time. And have weekly appointments or monthly appointments or as many appointments as they need. But do it over the phone so they can do it from anywhere. Because this is nonsense. This woman's gone through it time and time again for years. I think she's got the same as me. Depression and aspergers. She's got all the characteristics and all the symptoms. And Thursday night, when I was watching her live stream, it almost brought me to tears. 
I could understand what she was going through. I've chatted to her online since and she's found somewhere to get help with the Aspergers or an assessment with the Aspergers. But I'm more worried about the depression, which is a side effect of having autism. So I'm still trying to work out how she can get ongoing counselling. I've spoken to some other YouTubers that have, you know, had problems similar to me. Again, I'm not the only one out there. There are lots of us out there. Um, and they had to go private in the end which is a sad indictment of um, the national health system for psychotherapy. Unfortunately, I can understand why they went private because it is, it's too little too late all the time with the National Health Service. And to get counselling, if you don't really need it and you receive it, then it'll probably work for you. But my counselling comes once a year for 10 weeks, once a week. And it just gets kicking in about the fourth or fifth week. And I start getting better. And then it all stops. And then I've got to wait. I haven't reapplied for it again because I'm sick of reapplying for it. Instead of getting once a month counselling perpetually, I get 10 weeks counselling every 18 months roughly and it's a hassle applying for it because you get reassessed all the time. I mean this has been with me since I was six, since my mum died and it's not going to go away. It's a lifelong condition and the only friends I've got are on YouTube. And they're not really what I would class, I mean, I class friends as people you can phone. This is my definition of friend. Someone you can phone when you need to at 2.30 in the morning. Any morning. And if you can't get a reply back from them or they won't answer the phone, then they're not a true friend. And sadly, I only know one person that would pick the phone up at 2.30 in the morning. The trouble is she's done so much for me, I couldn't ring her at 2.30 in the morning. Otherwise I'd be waking her up every day. So I go online and try and talk to people at 2.30 in the morning. I don't call the Samaritans because the Samaritans don't talk to you, they listen. And people in my condition like the couple of people I've been speaking to this week, they need feedback. We need feedback. The Samaritans is all right if... Well, having said that, I'm wondering who the Samaritans are okay for. If all they do is they sit... Because I've spoken to the Samaritans a couple of times, and I find the email service a lot better than the telephone service because of the telephone service they will just sit there and say nothing whereas if you email them is it fred at samaritans.org or something um if you email them you do get like a conversation going it might be a copy and paste sort of conversation but you do get feedback which you don't get on the phone, and that's the biggest drawback with the Samaritans. I don't expect them to give advice, but it would be better for the Samaritans if they talked to you. But they don't. I've, li I've literally been on the Samaritans for 10 minutes, and they've not said a word. They've just let me talk. And at the end of it, I felt worse, because it's like I'm talking to a wall. See, I'm talking to you, and I've got Big Clive on, on the screen. Hopefully the microphone fills it all out, or most of it out. And that is my Saturday normally, listening, watching Big Clive for three hours, or four hours, depends how long it goes on for. 
and on Thursday I watch mm. Sasha from Sasha's narrowboat something or other. The highlight of my week so far has been... Oh, I can't get them up, I've got the tools on them. Replacing the bike tyres. That was easier than I thought. I watched one YouTube video on how they did it. and I mean, I managed to get... It didn't look like it, but I managed to get the right size inner tubes and the right size tyres. Whoa, that was a surprise. And they've gone on all right. I've just got to twist the handlebars around and get the brake and the gear cables done. And then I'll have a proper full-size working bike for the first time in my life. And then I've got to get used to riding a full-size bike. <sighs> Waltham Forest Council don't believe what I say. They don't investigate anything as well, I've discovered. What they do is they check the paperwork is correct. They don't actually investigate. And it's not good enough. If you complain about a system, then if you check that the system has been updated correctly, that isn't what I put me complaining about. I didn't complain the paperwork was wrong. I complained that their staff's attitude was wrong. And if all they're doing is checking the paperwork, how are they checking the attitude of the staff? I feel like it would be easier if I just jumped out this fucking window. No one listens to you. And those that do, for instance, the Equalities Service, the solicitors that deal with um, discrimination complaints, they called me this week. September the 3rd, they called me, the end of my period of when I'm supposed to get all the paperwork done. And I don't think they want to take the case on. I wish they'd just say they don't want to take the case on so I could try and find a solicitor to pay for. But they called me to say that I'd sent them two months ago the wrong um, benefit entitlement letter. I'm supposed to send the ESA one, not the PRP one. Well, I was just asked on the phone to send a letter of entitlement. Remember, I'm doing all this on my own with no support. And I can't guarantee I'm going to understand what you're saying. And they won't, without the letter of entitlement, contact EWP on my behalf because I haven't got the funding for it. It's catch-22. People in my situation get no support and get no help. And furthermore, the EASS, I think the initials are, the Equalities Service, they don't even call your non-private number. And so a lot of the time, they don't even comply with the 2010 legislation themselves. And they're supposed to be defending you on that legislation. I've got a GP at Handsworth Medical Centre that refuses to call me on a non-private number. I've got housing that refuses to call me on a non-private number. Every other department in the Wolfram Forest Council will call me on a non-private number. Housing refused to do so. And yet, they passed all the checks this week because they've got it on the log that I hang up on them when they call me on a non-private number or a private number rather and it's a falsification of the records I've said this for nine months now the paperwork is corrupted by Waltham Forest Housing they're putting down I've got people to tell me what they're putting down and they're putting down that I hang up on them when I don't get the phone call my phone, thanks to True Caller, blocks private numbers because I get panic attacks. I don't know how many times I'm supposed to tell people this. I finally got to talk to my consultant at Queen's Hospital this week after seven months of her trying to say, oh, we've been contacting Mr. Kip. And she wrote to, or one of them wrote to my GP two and a half months ago saying we're really concerned we've not been able to contact Mr Gibbons 
And I thought that was ironic because my GP hasn't contacted me since he said he would in March. He wrote me a letter after four weeks in March. And he said, well, I wrote a letter to the consultant. Well, phone me up and tell me then you wrote me a letter. Because, you know, otherwise I'm sitting here literally pulling my hair out, losing sleep. They're supposed to put me on vitamin D and calcium. They haven't done that. That was a year ago I had that last consultation. I am getting fed up with this life now. It's gone over a hill now. All that everyone seems to want to do is move me all the time. I got moved from Barker and Dagdon Council because social services there made my life hell. My neighbours made my life hell. And corporate complaints wouldn't follow a complaint up. Oh, isn't that unusual? Because that's exactly the same system's opening over here. Social services have told me to fuck off. I'm too well, but not well enough to leave by myself. This is what social services told me. You're in that grey area, Mr Gibbons, they told me. Oh, thanks for that. That really helps. Fine. So I can put a pair of shoes on, make a sandwich. But they can't help me. So, social services in Walker Forest told me to fuck off. Corporate, corporate complaints. Initially, three, four weeks ago, they said, oh yes, we can understand what you're going through, Mr Gibbons. And then suddenly, the review was, well, we've told you everything. Everyone's been told that you've got a single point of contact. So that's why no one's answering you. But hello, good customer practice means someone should be telling me that I've been referred back to the single point of contact. Either the person I email or the single point of contact. What's his fucking excuse? Oh, he's told me I don't want to communicate with him. So then it should be down to the person that I email. Initially, it should be the person I email to say, I'm referring your case over to XYZ, who is known as your single point of contact. But there's no appeal. The single point of contact is arbitrary. It's not done under a policy, I've been told. It's arbitrary. They don't want to talk to me because I ask all the awkward questions they don't want to answer. So someone has assigned me a single point of contact, which I don't accept because it takes my rights away and I've got no control over it. They haven't sectioned me and they haven't got a court order. So legally, they can't give me a single point of contact unless it's done under a policy, under restrictions, which I have an appeal to. I've got none of that. All I've been told is this person is your single point of contact. And corporate complaints are a pile of shit because they're supposed to investigate the first complaint. And that was dealt with by forwarding it over to um, a single point of contact again. And that's not how you answer a corporate complaint. So this is why I know the answer from corporate complaints is bullshit. And that's what's driven me over the edge this week. I'm sorry I've not made any more videos. I've done three or four videos since the last one. But I've just not been in the mood to put them up. They've literally been pieces to camera. I had the intention of putting them up. But when I watch them back, and I watch all these videos back before I put them up, when I watch them back, even I couldn't make head or tail out of it. So I pity the poor viewer. It was rambling like crazy. Oh, it's Jaeger time. It must be coming up to the top of the hour. Yes. I'll drink a drink with you, Clive. I go on dating sites, not to date, to find people to talk with. Because I've got no friends and I've got no family. Only Mary will talk to me. Mary calls me. She's the only one that calls me. And I'm quite lucky if... 
in a week, I get one person that will talk to me more than twice. Because then I just have to get blanked. I've been on seven, eight, nine, I think, was the maximum number of dating sites just to try and find people to talk to. And it is wearing me down. I can't cope with this anymore. Oh, I don't know. If it was any other time, I'd be. Sh this would be the time that I'd be walking down to Hyams Park to get totally drunk and fall in front of the road, like I did about a year ago. Except the woman that saved me a year ago isn't here anymore. I think she left to go back home. So I've literally got, even if I live streamed it on Facebook, I've got that many people that would be able to come and help me. So, it's only Merlin that keeps me going. My eldest cat. Not the other two, because they're young enough that they would move somewhere else. Merlin has a bond with me. He's known me most of his life. He lived next door to me three years or two years and then he I mean even before he started living in my place he used to run up to me when I came home from work and he'd come in occasionally and I'd feed him on the doorstep he's known me for 10 11 years and I owe him he's kept me going and he's such a cute little black cat he's just in front of me now it's the way he tries to cover the food up. I've got three bowls of food in front of me and he's gone from one to the other to the other. And his favourite one he tries to cover up. It's on carpet and he tries to cover it up. And it does make me laugh every night. Bye Merlin. That's him going in the background. So... The council are a piece of shit. They don't believe a word I say. Ian Duncan Smith is a piece of shit. He hasn't tried to do anything. My councillors are more than just a piece of shit. Because Ros Dor, I'm not going to call her by a proper name. Ros Dor, all this pretentious Dorite shit. Rosalind Dor. She's contacted mental health. I haven't even... This is the thing that pisses me off. Gina hasn't even given me the email address. Her email address. But I've got counsellors and people from housing contacting her. I haven't even got her email address. And Rosalind Dor has asked if I'm being moved into social care. She hasn't even contacted me. I've instructed Gina to tell her to fuck off and contact your fucking constituent. I've only been trying since February when she emailed me back saying, oh, it's this COVID. She hadn't even read my fucking email. That's why I told her to fuck off. You respect me by reading my email and replying to it, and I'll respect you. But you reply to just, oh, it's fucking bollocks. And you get treated like a piece of shit, Rosalind Dor. And as for, is it Tony or Tom Bell? Tony Bell? I've not heard from him at all. And this invisible councillor that doesn't actually turn up to any public meetings... In two and a half years, I've not seen him. But he was apparently at the Christmas party. He can go fuck himself as well. The Labour Party can go fuck themselves. I put a complaint in about my councillors. They've not even had the response. They've not even had the respect to respond to it. And all the corporate complaint is bullshit. 
I complained to the chief exec before I got assigned a single point of contact. And yet the excuse that came back from corporate complaints is because you've been assigned a single point of contact, the chief exec didn't reply to you. That's bullshit. I am fed up of being surrounded by liars and halfwits and people that treat me like a fucking mad person. I'm mad, yes. Mad, angry mad. Because people lie to my face. Duncan Angus. He arranged in July, I think it was, to remove the rubbish that was piling up in my bathroom. And he said on Friday, I'll text you to confirm it. He did not. It was a big fat lie. I blocked him and I put a complaint in about him. Nothing got done. They can't selectively choose what complaints to deal with. Otherwise, the system will never improve. All complaints have to be registered and all complaints have to be investigated. Not just made sure the paperwork is checked. Investigated. Correctly. It would be so much better if complaints for one council was investigated by someone outside that council. And indeed, to make sure that it was more than fair. Hello, Caspi, my little baby. To make sure it was more than fair, I would suggest publishing a league table of complaints so that people in councils would be actually working to lower the number of complaints. Not by massaging the figures, by actually lowering the complaints, by increasing the customer services level. But no, no one listens to me when I say sensible things like that. It's like the bullshit about the fire escape being blocked with, you know, personal items. March, six months ago now, seven months ago now, a letter came round saying, remove all your personal items or we'll remove them for you. Seven months, they're still there. There's more personal items out there now than there has ever been. And Waltham Forest corporate complaints have said they've done everything right. Really? On paperwork, they might have done everything. Actually, practically, they've done nothing. Because they've not actually come here in March and cleared the staircase. But they've probably filled the paperwork in saying the staircase is cleared. But no one came round and checked. And I'm fucked off with it. All that Wolf and Forest do is make sure the paperwork is correct. So as long as the people that come and clear the staircase say they've cleared the staircase, that's fine, because no one checks up on them. Where is the cross-check? I've been saying this since February. There is no one cross-checking departments' work. It's not just housing. It's all departments. Who's making sure that all departments are doing what the paperwork says they're doing? No one. They'll point out to corporate complaints. But corporate complaints don't have time. So all they do is they get the paperwork. And as long as the paperwork meets the obligations. However, that does fall down with my case. Because someone has assigned me a single point of contact and yet to take liberties away from people, to take freedoms away from me, there would have to be a policy with oversight. And they're not telling me which policy they're invoking the single point of contact under. So if there isn't a policy, because if there was, they'd be telling me, wouldn't they? If there isn't a policy, then Waltham Forest have committed a crime by removing my rights unlawfully. But as I say, no one gives a shit. And because no one gives a shit, they're allowed to get away with it. And it's getting on my fucking nerves now. 
I've been trapped in this flat now since more or less February. Before, four weeks before COVID. And no one is listening to me. I have to be virtually on the edge of suicide before I even get the police round. What has happened to this country? I don't know. I mean, I do know. We had an influx of immigrants in the 80s. Not the 50s and 60s. We didn't get that many over back in the 50s and 60s. We had an influx of immigrants in the 80s and 90s, especially. Because when I was at school in the 80s, there was hardly any immigrants. Asian and black children, three, four maybe in a year, hardly anyone. But as soon as you got to the 90s, I can't remember what happened in the 90s. Something happened that encouraged, I think it might be the NHS bit, with all the Asian doctors and that coming over, because a lot of doctors were retiring. So we had a lot of Asian doctors being recruited from India. And of course they bring their children over, blah, blah, blah. And I think it was back when the NHS had a lot of retirements that we had the influx of immigrants. But, um, it is much smaller and quieter. Because yeah, yeah. I always seem to have problems with people that wasn't born in this country when I was. Either children of immigrants or immigrants themselves. And it's like a clash of cultures. I was brought up in the British culture where generally we respected each other, please and thank you and queuing and all that sort of stuff. That's how I was brought up and that's how people of my era were brought up. And yet you get people from other countries that don't have that as a culture and they come over here and because they get positions of power over you, they start inflicting their low levels of culture or new when they should be adopting the native culture they're trying to force their culture on you and i'm not going to take it i don't accept it i was brought up differently to them i have a better education than most people because i taught myself i went through the normal school system but i had to teach myself all the major bits because they didn't cover it in school. So I watched an awful lot of documentaries, um, a, little, a lot of open universities. I read books, I listened to radio, I listened to Radio 4 a lot when I was a kid. And I watch an awful lot of YouTube documentaries now. You have to be selective because not all the stuff on YouTube is thoroughly researched. I like the bulk of the quantum stuff, the quantum mechanics stuff. I sort of know quantum, it changes from month to month quantum mechanics. So it's hard to keep up with it all, but the basics of quantum mechanics I understand. I do think that they're missing a point on quantum mechanics because I think that it looks weird because we're watching it in 3D and I think the universe isn't in 3D that's why it looks weird to us there's at least another two or three dimensions that we're not seeing and as it like the duality of light the double slit experiment that sort of stuff I'm sure if we could see five or six dimensions we'd be able to understand it more we have to make up theories about wave and particles of light to make it understandable about waveform collapsion if you investigate it and things like that. And I'm sure if it was like, if we could see another two or three dimensions, it would make total sense to us. But we can't. But just because we can't doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. As far as we know, everything we see is 3D, and yet all we see is 3D, so we can't, we don't know that everything is 3D. We might be seeing stuff 
that we say is 3D, but really it's a 5D interpretation because of how it interacts with our 3D universe. So I think, you know, quantum theory is weird, but I sort of understand it. I've always thought, ever since I was a teenager, I've always thought of light as wavy calls. Not particles or waves, wavy calls. Which is like a particle with waves in it. I haven't quite worked out how the double slit experiment works with that. But somehow this packet of waves splits and interferes with itself. I don't think it actually goes to both slits. That, that is ridiculous if you think about it. I don't think it actually does go through two slits. I just think the act of it going through two, one slit means that it breaks up the wavy core into two waves. So it's like bursting a balloon and the light is the thing encapsulated by the balloon and if you burst the balloon the water goes everywhere for instance if it's a water balloon but until that point until you burst that balloon by going through the filter the slit then it's just a balloon but going through the slit breaks the balloon into but waves and I think that's the best explanation I couldn't tell you the maths or I couldn't work the maths out to make it valid but I think that's a valid explanation that the light light comes in particles but the particles encapsulate waves a bit like a cell has a nucleus in the middle the cell is the particle and the nucleus is the wave and if you send a particle for a slit it breaks the cell wall and it lets the waves out and the waves will interfere with itself and give you an interference band how that works when you're watching it or you're not watching it I'm not sure because in, on my little plane if you send a particle through a slit it will break into waves and have an interference band but that's not what happens so there's something else that is missing between quantum mechanics and my view who knows, it could be something to do with wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, like they said in Doctor Who. It might have said it been said in jest, but I've always thought that time was that wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, ever since I was a kid. I've always seen time as like a bunch of strings all wrapped up in a ball, and your string interacts with other strings. And if it touches another string, then it will see what's on that bit of that string. Hence the reason we get ghosts and spurious effects. I'm going to stop shortly because I don't want this to be too long. And going by that clock, I've been going on for 38 minutes already. I just need to tell you people my diary that I'm not happy I'm back to where I was about two and a half years ago just after my initial breakdown and I'm feeling rather unloved I've totally it to go now finally because I don't know why. It feels like she doesn't listen to me. Because she doesn't answer what I ask her. And she answers something totally different. And anyone that has ever known me has hate, known I've hated people not answering questions that I put to them. And it's, it's worse than being ignored. If she said nothing, I would be able to cope with it. But she... She would answer questions I hadn't even asked. And it's like, well, did you not hear what I said? And I'm fed up of repeating myself all the time. I really don't know what else to say. I'm going to go back to watching Big Clive. 
It's 10.30 now. It'll probably be on for another hour and a half, two hours. And then I'll go to bed. The boys have been fed. All I've got to do is have my tablets. Finish the last little bit of wine off. Cheers, everyone. And then struggle to get out of bed again tomorrow, I suppose. Shall I see if I've got any missed calls or messages? Oh, yeah, just Oh, I've got two messages. Shall we see who they are from? But at least I got my bike tires done. All I need to do now is get around to hills. Get them to replace the cables. The brake and the gear cable, that is. And, um, for the first time in my life, I will have a full size working 21 speed bike, I think. I've had, you know, still in the Archer book. Bikes. I bought one when I was, when I was a kid, bizarrely enough. You know. But it was far too big for me. I couldn't ride it. It was, you know, I was only like 18 or something. And it was really huge, like preacher bike. It was heavy. It had three gears and it worked, but it was just too big for me. This one is about the right size. I've got new tyres and new tubes on it. All I need is the gear cable and the brake cable done, and then I need to learn to ride a bike again. Because when we get locked down again, I want to have a decent bike I can get out on. Because I'm not going to get any help from the council, I'm not going to get any help from mental health services. I'm getting so confused by the contact I'm getting from mental health, they might as well just not call me. One moment they're saying they're going to get a call from the Asperger support group who call me and then hang up after two minutes. And then I get a call back from Gina saying that it's not mental health that's going to be calling me, it's going to be someone else. Because I'm not dealing with the Asperger's group directly, they're going to go for a third party who's going to be getting the payments from the council, blah, blah, blah. And I still don't think I can afford it. Because I'm not on the high rate. I'm not on the real support level. I can't afford £130 a week. I mean, I'm only getting, I think, about 80 a week on PIP. And yes, I don't mind paying someone. But I don't need clinical support. I don't need £25 an hour support. I need admin support. Maybe £10 an hour. But where do you get admin support from that you can spend your PIP on to get help around to filling forms and things like that on a one-off basis? I don't know. I keep hoping that next week isn't going to be better than the last, but I don't have any confidence that next week will be any better than this week. I'm fed up with the housing ombudsman because I can't see what they're going to be able to do. I'm fed up with my solicitor because they don't seem to do anything. I've got to find the strength to actually put complaining against my solicitors. Karen Bellamy has been the only counsellor that's been helping me, but I've not spoken to her in months now. My two counsellors haven't given a toss. My MP hasn't done fuck all as far as I can see. I've actually written asking for a copy of what he sent to the council several months ago. Not received a copy of that. I've put freedom of information requests in about complaints I've put in. Not had any feedback on that. And it just goes on and on and on. I've got to constantly check emails and see which one's expiring and follow up. And 
I can't be bothered any more people. Anyway, I'm sorry about tonight's one. I'm sorry about all the gaps in here. I was trying to do two a week. But I don't feel safe putting these up in real time. I'm putting this up in real time tonight because I don't think there's any more left. I think the last ones would have been August. So I'm about four or five weeks short of a video. So I'm going to try and start doing these properly again. More real time. Anyway, I hope you people have a good night. And I'll speak to you shortly. Thank you for watching. Who cares if you like and subscribe? I'm doing this for my own use anyway.